Excel's pivot by function is a great way to summarize data, and you can get a nice layout using just the four required arguments. But today, I'm going to take a look at some of the optional arguments, and you can control how the headers, the totals, and the sorting works. This is Deborah Dalgleish from Contextures.com. Here's a basic pivot by function formula, and I've used the four required arguments for rows, columns, values, and the function. You can see all of those settings up here. I've got source data, which is food sales, and the pivot by formula uses year, region, category, and quantity. When I set up the pivot by formula, I was sure to include the headings when I was selecting the data. The first optional argument that I'm going to look at is field headers. And if I click on this cell, We've got the four required arguments so far. I'll click to add a comma, and now it shows the options that I have for field headers. And I've made them bigger here. So no, I don't want to see any field headers. Those would add the words years, region, category, and quantity. I'd probably say no, I don't need any extra information. But if you had a more complicated layout, you might want to include headings just so it's clear. And in that case, I would pick three. Yes, my data does include headers, and I want to show them. So if I type three here, now we can see those field names, region, category, year, and quantity. The next two optional arguments that I'll look at are row and column for the totals. So what depth do you want in the totals? I've got two fields in rows one in columns, and one value. So our options here are going to be, no, I don't want any totals, or you've got two options for grand totals, and two for grand and subtotals. To show subtotals, you have to have at least two fields in that area. So for rows, I have two fields, so I can show subtotals here. Columns, I just have one field, so I can only show grand totals for that. So I'm going up to my formula, type a comma. This is for field headers. I'm going to just omit that. And now we're at row total depth. So what do I want for the row totals? Because I have two, I can show grand and subtotals either at the bottom or at the top. So I'm going to show them at the bottom by putting a two here. And we'll see how that looks. So now each region has a subtotal at the bottom, and then the grand total falls below that. We'll go back to the formula, comma, and the next is sorting. We'll look at that in a minute, so I'll omit that. And then we've got our column total depth. We only have one field in the column area, so we can only show grand totals. You can show them at the bottom or at the top. So I'll show them at the top with a minus one, press enter. And the top, because it's horizontal, top is at the left. The total for each region's product sales and the grand total at the bottom. The third set of optional arguments is for sorting. So we're going to look at how to sort the row and the column. So here's that basic pivot by formula again. And I'll put a comma. And we're just going to skip past a few of these. For sorting, you're going to be using a number which represents which item you want to sort. And then you're either going to have a positive number, meaning sorted A to Z, or negative is Z to A. For the rows, we've got three items we can use. We've got two row fields and one value. So if I type a one here, it's going to sort by region. A two will sort by the category and three would sort by values. I'm going to type a three and leave it positive so it will sort A to Z, which will be for a number smallest to largest. So when I press enter, it sorted the east categories, the smallest sales to the largest, and the same for the west, smallest to largest. It also sorted the east is before the west here, because we're sorting smallest to largest for the entire region. Now we'll go back to that, and I'm going to just 
skip over that. Now let's take a look at sorting the column. So we're at column total depth and column sort order. So for this, we've only got two fields here, the year and quantity. So the column field and the value field. I'm going to sort by number one here, which is the year, and it's A to Z, which it is already. So if I type a minus one here, press enter, it sorts those years, largest to smallest. Let's try something different. Instead of sorting by the year, let's sort the total. So right now it's 264,000. Let's put those largest to smallest. So instead of minus one here, this would be minus two because we want the second field to be sorted. And now at the bottom, we can see the totals are sorted largest to smallest. Thing that can be confusing about sorting is if the totals aren't showing. So in here, we've got row totals just automatically. But if I say zero, I don't want any row totals. Those disappear. And now if we're sorting our columns largest to smallest, it's hard to tell why they're sorted like that. So if you're sorting by the values, keep in mind that those numbers are going to be sorted by their totals, even if the totals aren't showing. And you can get this workbook and try all these optional arguments for yourself on my Contextures website.